Good evening. Today is Monday. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Today is Monday, May 2nd, 2016. We're here for the purpose of the regular meeting of the Elmhurst City Council. It is 740. I would ask that you all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk Spencer, I'd ask you to call the roll. Deuter, absent. Sabatino. Here. Leader. Here. Dunn. Here. Graham. Here. Polemski. Here. York. Absent. Toledo. Here. Healy. Absent. Levin. Here. Kennedy. Here. Conquist. Here. Wagner. Here. Moliner. Here. 11 present, 3 absent. 11 present, 3 absent. We have a quorum. On to, uh, to uh, agenda item 3, receipt of written communications. Is there anybody at this time who has any written communications that wish to submit? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll move on to public forum, agenda item 4. Public forum is an opportunity, uh, an, an option for anyone in the audience to address the council on any item they so choose. We ask out of respect for the work that we have to get done here this evening and out of respect for other folks who may want to speak that you keep your comments to three minutes. If you get over three minutes, I will give you a gentle reminder and ask you to wrap your comments up. When you're recognized by the clerk, we ask that you make your way over to the microphone over here. Uh, state your name for the record since we are uh, videoing and uh, if you want, you can state your address, which is optional. Clerk Spencer, at this time, is there anyone who has signed up for public forum? Yes, Mr. Mayor. We'll start with Michael Hess, 107 North Berteau. Respect to council members, um, my name is Michael Hess. I was here about three weeks ago or so, and uh, I spoke at that meeting, and uh, it was brought to my attention that, um, uh, Mr. Grabowski, that uh, some of the comments that you said that I made were uh, inaccurate, and I'd just like to go on record as saying that I'm not going to get up here and waste your time and my time to start talking about things that aren't factual. Now, if we're talking semantics, like specific numbers and things like that, I mean, I could go on about some statements and accurate, you know, inaccurate numbers that you've made as well to the press recently, but I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, if you would like to meet with me sometime, I would, I would encourage you to call me into your office. I'd be happy to sit down and talk to you about some things and we can get it out, you know, in, in, in the air that, that way or something like that, you know, but um, you know, I grew up in this town. I spent a lot of my childhood here. Um, like you, Elmers was on my radar as a place that I'd like to live someday, but had it not been for a, an economic downturn in the housing, I wouldn't have even been able to afford a house in this town on a single income, but luckily I was able to make that happen. So um, I know a lot of people from this town that grew up here like me, that have families and stuff like that, and public safety is, is very dear to me. It's not just because of what I do, it's because I know these people on a personal level. And so I, I will make it my mission to make sure that the people of this town are gonna get the services that, that they deserve. And that's all I have to say at this time, thank you. Claude Pagash, 566 West Gladys. Claude Pagot, 566, always Gladys. Was out to development and planning meeting last week. Interesting. People should spend more time there. The aldermen should too. Too bad all the meetings are held on one day. Doesn't give them an opportunity to really be present to hear what was asked for. Developers asking for a great deal. If it all comes to pass, then he's willing to talk some more. But failure to agree to any part of it, and he's not too sure he wants to talk. But if it does, initial requests go through it's going to cost the people of this town a lot of money. Doesn't matter where it comes from. So we'll see how this all develops. It's 
very interesting. I think I'll spend more time there, and the alderman should too. We're having a lot of recently no bids. I understand the principle behind it. If it's something unique, like you're building a nuclear reactor, that's one thing. But sewer lines, no bid. We got another no bid on here. It really leaves the aldermen sitting out there wondering if they're getting a deal on anything. That's the whole process. And the guy that got the no bid had to see the drawings before he could even give a price on it. So may we stop this, huh? Unless you guys are starting to build nuclear reactors. Don't keep on telling me that what you're getting is so exceptional that nobody on the face of the earth except the individual that you give the no bid contract to is the only person that can do it because I looked up in the DuPage County has plenty of sewer contractors. Also see on the PID on our agenda for this evening, general obligation bonds. Looks like the city needs some general obligation bonds. I hope they come along and state just how much that's going to add to what we already have in general obligation bonds. Mr. Pog, I'll share your three minutes. I'd ask you to wrap it up. Yes, I would like to surely know just how much this increases the obligation of every resident in this room and in the city. Shelley Le Laguerre, 449 East Webster. <clears throat> Shelley Laguerre, 449 East Webster. Um, I come to you tonight in August, um, on August 17th, I got a name one, my, I got a phone call from my daughter, she wasn't feeling well. 911 was called by the time I arrived, my daughter was unconscious on the floor, first responder was there, which was the police officer. And moments later, minutes later, the ambulance arrived. My daughter went into respiratory failure. She needed to be intubated. Um, there wasn't a fire truck or backup, so the police officer took my daughter to Elmhurst Hospital. I didn't know my daughter had any allergies. It turned out she had an anaphylactic reaction, so there was no epinephrine available. So I've been working with Chris Nibo to make it permissible for first responders to carry and administer <coughs> epinephrine. In doing so, I was kind of looking around and seeing, you know, how many ambulances are there? What do our firefighters do? Do we have paramedic firefighters? Things like that. So I realized that we have two ambulances in Elmhurst, one on the north side, one on the south side. And some of our firefighters, I believe, are also paramedics, but they're not allowed to act as such because the fire trucks, fire engines are basic life support and we need advanced life support for them to be able to administer medications, monitor their hearts, and things like that. I guess with getting involved with the epinephrine and, and really researching that, it kind of concerns me that in a, such a large community, we have limited resources as far as how many people can administer a, or be ALS certified. Um, I did some research and there's probably 22 of the surrounding areas that are ALS on their engines, which means that they have a monitor, I believe, some basic medications, which I've been working with Mylan and you can work with companies to get those meds. I think the biggest cost would be um, probably the monitor, being a nurse. I did some research on that as well. I just wanted it to bring it to everybody's attention that we are a growing community, we're an amazing community. Love Elmhurst, it's been good to our family. Raised my kids here, lost my daughter, but I just don't wanna see anything like that ever happen to anyone again. And I think with the size of the community, we need to look and see if we do have adequate numbers of people 
to, I don't know, take charge. If you have two emergencies on the south side and then something happens on the north side and there's no fire truck that can serve as an ALS, then who's going to be there to help that person? And I can't help thinking that way. I guess it's the mom in me, and it's the nurse in me. So just thought I would bring that to your attention, and I would look forward to meeting um, Mayor Morley and the city manager at some later time to maybe discuss things further. Thank you. That's all who signed in, Mr. Mayor. Okay, that's it for everyone who signed in. Is there anyone who did not have an opportunity to sign in on our sign-in sheet but wishes to address us at this time? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing none, that's going to conclude public forum for this evening. On to agenda item five. Announcements, any announcements? Seeing none, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. At this time, is there any item on the consent uh, agenda item six? Is there any item on the consent agenda any alderman wishes to have pulled? To, uh, for either further discussion, comment, or to vote no. Any agenda item? Alderman Bram. 6.23. 6.23. Okay. Any other uh, items any alderman wishes to have removed from the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none, I will now entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda minus item 6.23. Motion by Alderman Mulliner, second by Alderman Dunn. Clerk Spencer, I'd ask that you call the roll. Deuter, absent. Sabatino. Aye. Leader. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Graham. Aye. Polemski. Aye. York, absent. Toledo. Aye. Healy, absent. Levin. Kennedy? Aye. Honquist? Aye. Wagner? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. 11 ayes, no nays, and three absent. Uh, 11 ayes, no nays, uh, motion carries. Consent agenda minus agenda item 6.23 has been approved. Uh, <coughs> give me a second. Got there, Penny. He said for the next item. Uh, all right. Um, well, let me do this for the record. I'm going to ask. Sure. I know what this is. Uh, Clerk Spencer, okay. please read the uh, ordinance for uh, 6.23. An ordinance granting a conditional use permit with associated variations and preliminary and final approval of a plat of subdivision right. for the redevelopment of the property commonly known as 100 North Addison, Elmhurst, Illinois. Can you read the pen number? No, we're good. Where am I done? Okay. All right. Um, yeah, no. Uh, okay. Uh, normally I would ask for a motion to put this before council, but um, according to our code, I don't know the number here. Well, long story short is if I get something in writing from three aldermen that says they want to delay it for two weeks, I delay it for two weeks. Uh, and uh, alderman, uh, Alderman Levin, Kennedy, and Sabatino just submitted to the clerk and myself a request to have this ordinance um, held for passage till the next city council meeting. So uh, that doesn't require a vote. It's just part of our uh, ordinance. Um, it's similar to uh, if two aldermen want to push back a report. In this case, it's an ordinance. It requires three in writing, and that's what I got from Alderman Levin, Kennedy, and Sabatino. So agenda item 6.23. We'll move until our next uh, meeting, which is what, what day is 16th. two weeks? The 16th. Okay. Um, on to uh, agenda item seven, committee reports, agenda item 
This is a report out of the Finance Committee. Clerk Spencer, I'd ask that you read the recommendation. It is therefore the recommendation of the Finance, Council Affairs, and Administrative Services Committee that the City Council authorize the sale of 2016 general obligation bond issued in the amount of $25 million to be issued to finance upcoming stormwater improvement projects. Signed by Kevin L. York, Chairman, Bob Dunn, Vice Chairman, Noel P. Toledo, and Mark P. Sabatino. Okay, to put this before Council, I will ask for a motion to approve the report and recommendation as read. Motion by Alderman Dunn, second by Alderman Toledo. Alderman Dunn, this is a report out of your committee. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a uh, re report out of the Finance Committee. Uh, we recently reviewed the um, um, need to uh, go out for uh, G uh, go general obligation bonds for uh, paying for some stormwater projects. Um, r right now in 2016 and 2017, we had approximately $28 million in uh, projects that were budgeted for. We do have uh, three million of that um, covered with previously issued bonds, so there is a need for uh, $25 million to pay for, for these projects that will, that will be completed in 2016 uh, in, into, uh, into mid-2017. There's a total of nine projects there are six to be completed in 2016, and those are the, uh, the quarry projects, which is uh, also known as the Tree Streets, the Geneva Project, Washington, uh, York 290, Harrison, and York Commons. And then we have three that are scheduled to be completed in 2017, in the, in the first half of 2017. Uh, and those would be uh, scheduled now, Golden Meadows, Madison, and the Bryan Gravel Lot. Um, we're looking at, uh, according to Public Works calculations, about 105 acre feet of total stormwater storage that is in the plan right now. And with these particular projects, we have about 30% of that getting done in 2016 and about 40 percent of that getting done next year in 2017. So making significant progress in terms of creating tension areas to hold stormwater, to hold the, uh, the, the designed amount of, of stormwater that's required. Uh, as Council will recall, we recently passed a quarter percent home rural sales tax and that uh, is designed to pay for these bond issues and this will be starting in July 1st. Uh, it's intended to, as I mentioned, to pay for these, uh, the debt service on these bonds. It's expected that these bonds will be paid for uh, on or around 2035 uh, and uh, We'd have a total of about $41 million in debt, debt service at that point. Uh, on the $25 million bond that we are looking to, to issue this year in 2016 uh, to cover these projects plus the $4 million uh, that are uh, from previous, previous issues. Um, Council is committed to these projects to mitigate stormwater issues in many locations throughout Elmhurst. And um, just to put this in perspective, uh, this is a cost, a significant cost that, uh, that the city is incurring over the next 20 years. We're averaging about $20 million uh, in, in debt service to, to pay for these projects, these stormwater projects. Um, given the 15,000 or so homes, in the city, we're looking at about $135 a year uh, for each home in Elmhurst to, to pay for these, the debt service on these stormwater projects. However, since we are planning on paying for this, these bonds through this, the new home rule sales tax that, that was just passed, um, that won't be incurred directly 
by, by our residents. Uh, however, it will be incurred by residents and those that, that do visit, um, that do visit Elmhurst and, and incur and, and buy items and, and, and pay the sales tax uh, for those items. Um, so this amount uh, is, is not a trivial amount, so that's why it's critical that the city continues to work with other government bodies to try to get these projects done in an expeditious fascist and uh, expeditious manner and to keep these costs as low as possible. So I ask for the council support on this bond issue. Um, we felt it best to issue the bonds um, this year since the uh, expenditures are needed in 2016 and very early in 2017. Uh, we did look at the option to issue a, a um, issue two bond issues, uh, one in 2016 and, and a smaller one in 2017. Uh, but with the uncertainty in interest rates, if the interest rates on the bond should go up just a quarter percent, it would make uh, it would eat up the savings in doing that. So the committee went back and forth. We were split on that issue, whether to, uh, to end up with two different bond issues. But uh, in the end, we felt it more prudent to, to issue the uh, one bond issue, the $25 million bond issue uh, this year. Um, so we'll entertain any questions that anyone might have on that. OK. Any, any additional comments or questions? Alderman Toledo. Uh, thank you. And, um Thank you, Alderman Dunn, for uh, a good explanation there. Just a couple things that I'll uh, add to that. Um, first off, I think we all know that these stormwater projects that this bond issue will fund are a high priority not only for this council, but also um, because of that, uh, it's a high priority for our residents, as we saw in the resident survey. Um, so that's something that the residents of this town have, has asked us to work on. We are doing that um, across all of our committees, especially through Public, work, public Works. And um, it, we're now at the point where we need um, additional monies to go ahead and continue these projects. Um, the other point that I'd like to make, uh, Alderman Dunn did bring up the, the discussion that we had of the two different bond issues. Um, and I wanted to point out that right as of Monday, when we discussed this at committee, um, municipal bonds were at a eight year low in terms of the interest rate. So we're at a, a very, if you, anyone took the time to look, uh, the curve has declined over the past eight years with minor fluctuations. Um, they do go up and down much more frequently than, than I expected, but we are at a very historically low period. It is a good time to get this um, financed at a very um, attractive rate for uh, the taxpayers in this town. So I wanted to add that. Thank you. OK, additional comments as it relates to this report. Uh, Alderman Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, question for the financer. Sure. Budget. Thank you. Um, we're in our second year of a five-year abatement uh, plan, I believe. Second or third? I can't remember exactly. But was the quarter percent home rule tax that's being implemented to help fund the obligation Part of that five-year plan, I just cannot recall. Alderman Dunn. In addition to, I mean, we're already abating. We're on a plan to get to 100 percent abatement, yeah. right? So we're not okay. Double well, tax. In terms of in terms of the debt debt service abatement yep. uh, in the tax levy discussions, we, you're correct, Alderman Wagner, that we, uh, as a council, we generally had abated the uh, the debt service. <laughs> Uh, up until we had uh, a pretty large recession a few years ago and, and needed to levy to, to pay for the, that debt service. Um, we are expecting to um, completely abate that debt service in two years, I believe. Uh, so we're on target to, um, to be down to a full abatement on, on that debt service in, in the tax levy. Uh, in terms of the ho home rule sales tax, that's a different uh, tax funding source um, that 
we as a home rule community are able to uh, to establish that and with the the expiration of the county's uh, quarter percent sales tax that they had for the uh, the water district I can't recall the specific uh, terminology for that uh, but that expired May 1st um, May 1st or June 1st and and we are starting this uh, home rule sales tax a quarter percent July 1st Got it. thank you Alderman Kennedy thank you mr. mayor I just wanted to say thank you to the committee you know public works has spent a tremendous amount of time looking at all the projects for stormwater and for you guys to you know take this up obviously important thing we need the money to pay for these projects so thank you for doing this any additional comments Alderman Bram um, yes thank you um, just a couple comments um, when we I was trying to look for it in the, the budget book um, did we have an estimate at that time if either of the committee members know um, on what this debt service would be I mean it's definitely a high amount and I'm not trivializing the fact there's a lot that needs to be done from a stormwater management perspective um, but we're probably at one of the highest at least in my tenure of the debt limit you know closing in on 5% probably closer than in at least recent times um, so did we know at budget time is this a number that we kind of forecasted that we knew about or is this higher or lower in budget time or maybe we need to suspend the rules and ask that question of staff well I, I think uh, it does spell that out in the report that we are once we issue this bond issue which is a rather large one um, we will be at four percent of the uh, EAV in Elmhurst uh, generally we've been lower than that our policy is five percent so we're still well below that uh, but at this point upon issuing this bond issue we'd be at four percent Alderman Bram, we did know during budget season, just so you know, that this was coming. The, the bigger issue we had was how it was going to be funded. And there was a schedule when the council passed the home rule sales tax. Uh, there was a schedule attached to that report that showed which projects we were going to do. But the bonds themselves were in the budget, the, the, the amounts. Okay, so these amounts, this amount, the $25 million, was, was forecasted at that time, roughly? It, roughly it was it was yeah it was close it was split between two years the question is when do we float them and this the committee made the decision that this would be the best financial decision to do it at this point thank you okay any additional comments or questions clerk Spencer asked you to call the vote Deuter absent Sabatino aye Leader aye Dunn aye Bram aye Polemski aye York Absent Toledo. Aye. Healy absent Levin. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Conquest. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Moliner. Aye. Eleven eyes, zero nays, three absent. Eleven eyes, zero nays, motion carries. Uh, report is approved. On to uh, agenda item eight. Reports and recommendations. Eight point one, Mayor Morley, that's me. Okay, real quick. Uh, City of Elmhurst, we launched our new website last Monday, was it? Mm -hmm. um, I encourage all to go on. It, uh, it looks a lot better. Uh, it takes a little bit getting used to. Um, there's a lot of information, but I think it's laid out much better. So if you're used to the old site, you're definitely going to like this site. Uh, in addition, um, we're also working on an Explore Elmhurst website, which will be um, uh, and uh, uh, exactly what it sounds it's going to be what to do in Elmhurst and a little bit more promotional in Elmhurst where the city of website the city website is really informational um, Bless you. I want to extend a thank you to Roz Long um, we had some uh, tough weather this weekend but they toughed it out uh, in Wilder Park and we had our 20th annual art in the park which I know was successful um, and then uh, We'll continue to give stormwater updates, um, um, as uh, council is aware, we do have an agreement for the Madison School uh, site, and uh, we're hosting an open house for all residents to go over that project on May 11th here at City Hall. 
What's the timing on that? Four to six. Four to six, May 11th. Um, other than that, um, we had a, uh, get my timing right. We had last Thursday, we had a uh, stormwater communications committee update. That's a communication meeting with uh, parks and schools. Um, didn't get very far with schools, with parks. Uh, both parks and schools actually are sitting on IGAs that we've supplied to them, mm -hmm. and they've committed to get back to us. Um, for schools, they owe us some answers on the Bryan Junior High site that we're looking at, and uh, the parks um, are supposed to get back to us on the next one in line for us, for them, which is uh, Golden Meadows. And uh, that concludes my report. City Manager Grabowski. Thank you. Uh, two items tonight. Uh, the first is a reminder that uh, this Saturday will be the last spring cleanup. That will be for the north side. Uh, that is on Saturday. And the other item is that uh, vehicle stickers need to be purchased and displayed uh, as of May 1st. So uh, please remind your constituents of that and anyone listening today. Thank you. Okay. Any other reports? Alderman Mulliner. I don't have a report, but I have a question. The stormwater update meeting that's going to be on May 10th. Good point. Four to six. Is there any way that that could be like from four to seven so people can get home who are coming down from, you know, Chicago and places like that who may get home after six? May 11th. But yes, we can extend it. That would be helpful for the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other reports? Alderman Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to tag on to your talk of the Park City School. Our next meeting is going to be Wednesday, the 25th of May, for the next time those three groups are going to get together. And I just wanted to highlight for the council that uh, in our last meeting on Thursday, Elmhurst Park District stated that they were not interested in further um, discussions on the detention projects or potential projects at Wild Meadows Trace and Crescent Park. Um, they also are not interested in East End, but because we have gone ahead and purchase four homes and we'll be working on a detention project in that area um, we'll we will address that but um, they won't be uh, looking at any projects in those other two parks and so from a public work standpoint we're going to need to look at alternate means uh, other projects and or buyouts in those areas if we're going to address uh, flooding for those residents so stay tuned for uh, discussions on those but wanted to give you that information as soon as we got it thank you Thank you, Alderman Kennedy. On the 25th, the park's not going to be there, right? Correct. Yeah, and uh, to follow up, uh, the next committee meeting is the 25th, but um, the parks will not be there. Only the schools will be there on the 25th. Um, they've got, um, they know what they have to do, and there wasn't going to be any additional information for them to add, but we're, um, we're kind of in a timing issue with the schools, so we wanted to hopefully get information out of them, and that's why we scheduled that on the 25th. Okay, any other reports? Alderman Bram. Uh, yes, um, I've received a couple of questions um, or concerns maybe in regards to the property tax bill coming out. Um, I know I received mine today in the mail, haven't opened it up yet. But as I was thumbing through the budget document, it, there's a nice little chart of a dollar bill divvied up that actually shows you on where your property taxes go. Um, school district, according to this, is 71% and the city is 7.93% of your property tax bill. So I just want to do maybe a public service announcement um, when we're talking about the property tax bill and there's a lot of various entities that take a chunk out of those dollars that you're giving every year or twice a year. Um, and if you want to know the details, you can take a look at the budget book, but the, school, the city gets approximately a little bit less than 8% out of that whole bill. Thank you. Okay. Any other announcements? And uh, for the second year in a row, we lowered the overall um, tax rate for the citizens. City of Elmhurst did. Any other reports? Seeing none, we'll move on to ordinances. Um, agenda item 9, 9.1, Clerk Spencer, I'd ask you to read the ordinance. An ordinance to accept and approve a certain grant of storm sewer easement generally located at 400 First Street in the City of Elmhurst, Illinois. We, did we? Okay. All right. Um, to put this before council, I'll ask for a motion to approve the ordinance as read. Motion by Alderman Kennedy, second by Alderman Wagner. Discussion? Thank Alderman you, Mr. Kennedy. Mayor. Um, in the consent agenda, there was a, a report to uh, 
ultimately work with the contractor and get the easement so that we could work on this project uh, as soon as possible uh, for the quarry project. And so we uh, asked to suspend the rules and do the ordinance in the same night so that uh, we could get that work going as soon as the contractor is ready to do so. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Clerk Spencer, I ask you to call the vote. Uh, Deuter, absent. Sabatino. Aye. Leader. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Graham. Aye. Polemski. Aye. York, absent. Toledo. Aye. Healy, absent. Levin. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Honquist. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. 13 ayes, 0 nays, 3 absent. Oh, I have 11 here, and I said 13, sorry, thinking of that 3. 11 ayes, 0 nays, 3 absent. 11 ayes, 0 nays, motion Two. passes. Uh, agenda item 9.1 is approved. On to other business. Any other business? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Alderman Levin, second by Alderman Dunn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.